right, folks, it's a simple job we do here. We unleash the friendly octopus that claws at everything the Nigerian state throws up in its political firmament. And today, we're back with fresh offerings. Now this, a presidential address to Dow's protests leaves more minds inflamed. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu finally bowed to pressure on Sunday, addressing Nigerians on the fourth day of the hashtag end bad governance protests. Did the president's speech fall short of expectations? Well, so say a few notable Nigerians. Professor Wole Shoenka is one of them, and so is former Vice President Atik Abubakar. We will try to find out today why a fifth day of protests has already begun, uh, has already seen Nigerians mobilized to the streets, and why they seem geared up to do 10 straight days on the streets, and why a president's speech hasn't done much to keep them back at home. If you're ready, so are we. My guest today is none other than Barrister Evan Sufeli. He's an attorney at law and a public affairs commentator. Barrister, welcome to the program. Thank you. My well, pleasure. yes, let's get going at once. The president's speech, did it hit the mark or not for you? No, it didn't. Why? Uh, the president's speech was unfortunate. Okay. Unfortunate because there were a lot of expectations as to the president addressing the need of the country. Mm -hmm. In fact, the office of the president is created by Section 130 of the Constitution. The responsibility of the president is outlined in the Constitution, part of which is to steer the economy in the way that we guarantee prosperity for all and sundry. Now, to take policies, make decisions that will ease the burden and the stress on the citizens. Now, the Constitution also empower him to appoint ministers to get that job done. Okay. But, you know, ever since the protest started, the protest is about the president's policy, his decisions when he came into office, when he said some city is gone, and that created a lot of problems for Nigerians, followed by the floating of the Naira, and then other sundry policies, the increase in the import duties that, that he later took off for, for food and all that, for grains and all that. So when you look at the agitation, what is agitation about? The agitation is about cost of living, uh -huh. okay, primarily, uh -huh. because certain decisions have been taken that took cost of living higher than necessary, uh -huh. and there was no um, corresponding increase in the income of the citizens, whether in the private sector or in the public sector. And the people have assembled and said, you know what, they are going to take over the streets to press home their demands. One of the demands is that the president should reverse the subsidy, he should cut down the cost of governance, Okay, among others, and then make sure that um, uh, the cost of food and the rest of the price is controlled, and so many other things. Now, one would have expected that because the people have a clear demand, the president's speech should hit up, take off from those demands, and you know address the issue as to what government intends to do now that government know the demand of the people. But the president came and uh, delivered a speech wherein he was practically telling Nigerians to, uh, you know, just keep up hope, keep looking at the government. Um, the government took a decision that in the long run will benefit the people, according to him, that it was necessary that the government took that decision, that um, some investors have come in ever since then too, that he mentioned with certain amount of money they are coming to invest. Um, the question you ask yourself is, when two investors come and then five of them go away, what, what is the impact mm. of that? Mm. Then you go further to look at uh, the fact that the speech was not empathetic. The speech was disconnected from the people. Mm -hmm. Not only did it not address the people's uh, agitation, okay. it also falls short of um, connection with the people's Demands. Okay, so let's bring two things to the table. I saw the president speech myself. It, he didn't even say two investors, two investors had not come. They've only signed. Yeah, they signed. Yeah. Which is more like saying we intend to. Yes, yeah, signed. Now, so that is still in the realm of intentions. Mm. But uh, which means we can't count those as, as investments yet. We cannot. Okay, good. Now, but let's come to the issues. What would you rather the president had said in his speech? Yes, I would rather that the president would have addressed cost of living as number one. Mm -hmm. And state exactly what government 
has done or is doing or will do to reduce cost of living, uh -huh. the practical strategy uh -huh. um, from the issue of security, uh -huh. okay, at least to guarantee self-security and security of food. Because the truth is that if we have security, uh -huh. Nigeria is self-sustaining, very much so. It is because of the uh, headsmen and uh, farmers' clashes that led to an insurgency and then later banditry uh -huh. that reduced the, the willpower of farmers, uh -huh. who, by the way, are subsistent farmers. Uh -huh. But even with their crude method of farming, they're able to feed 200 million people uh -huh. and we had enough to export uh -huh. until they are unable to apply their trade any longer because the the insurgents have taken over the stratosphere and have made demands to farmers to pay certain amount of money for their I, I don't know how worried you are because the president did, did talk about food security in the manner of speaking. He, he, he talked about farming, talked about um, um, infrastructure and things like that, but he never mentioned even for once the issue of security of farmers. Yes. In terms of, I mean, we know in Kaduna, Katsina, another place where you want to plant, you pay a levy to Boko Haram. You want to harvest, you pay levy again. Mm -hmm. The president clearly skirted the real issue affecting farmers that, which is security, which is mm -hmm. why they can't go to the farms anymore. Um, how, 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 how worried are you? Is that what you mean when you say it didn't connect with Nigeria? Yes, because he was just talking aloof. He wasn't addressing security. Anything you are saying as part of the solution of Nigeria in 2024 that is devoid of security mm. is nothing. Mm. It goes to no issue. Mm. You are just blabbing, okay? Because security is the major issue that we are lacking in the country. So if you have any policy, any way to bring back the people to track or to bring them to prosperity and abundance, you must first of all address security. You, you don't address it. So he just glossed over the issue. And if you even read the speech deeply, there is no attempt to address the problem of Nigeria mm -hmm. on the speech, on the surface mm -hmm. of it. There's no attempt. No attempt was made. He just used it like it was more of making more promises. Okay. Exactly. And then uh, almost sound like a manifesto. Yeah. Then uh, before you know it, the speech was gone, and nothing <laughs> remarkable. Well, it, from it. In, in fairness to the president, he did allude to a number of initiatives that have been taken. One was is it um, IT talent export program? Yes. And there was another one about ID ICE. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, there was another. You know, I mean, a, a, a number of youth programs. But the question we always ask is. How is it that government always talks about things that people, you can't find somebody who says, yes, I've been there, or my brother has been there. Mm. It's only today that we're hearing about these things. I mean, yesterday, yeah. in, in his speech and manner of speaking. Yes. Why is this the case? Why are we hearing a lot that the government appears to have done, whereas we can't feel its impact in the economy? For example, so somebody said, if you put money in your pocket, it will bulge. It, it is the natural consequence of putting money in your pocket. Mm. Yes, if you put money in an economy, the economy should feel mm. that. But with everything the president has said, price of things are still going up very high. The price of there are fewer queues on the roads, yes. and so and the president justified everything he has done up up until now. Is that more of we our police are doing well, or that the protest didn't really get worse in any way? I mean, for him to stand that triumphalist. Well, he he wants to damn the consequences. So. Because hold on, please. He waited. The president was advised to address the nation before the protests came, mm. if perhaps to douse. You know, I mean, if only he could say what to make them not protest anymore. Yes. But he didn't protest. Ostensibly, he the, didn't address. He didn't address. He didn't. Ostensibly, the heat of protest was strong on day one. Maybe it was a little less on day two. And then by day three, it had sort of. Um, and then so by day four, when 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 he said maybe there was a feeling that. The protest has sort of wind, so he cannot in, uh, he cannot come in and then say what he felt he needed to say, and then nothing would happen. He didn't address the people on the uh, before the protest. He did but not. If, if he had done that, mm. the process would have been worse because if this content was what he had, was what he had before the protest, it would therefore mean that he's asking the people to actually take the protest and entrench it for that ten days, mm. and it would have been more vibrant if he had done that because then we would have seen that. Truly, we are just on our own. Mm. Everything is deflected. What we just have is that there's no hope in the side of the president, mm. okay, or the government. The government have no intention to address the problems of Nigeria. So mm. it would have been more if that was the content. And 
they deliberately didn't put that out mm. now putting it out now whether late or early the truth is that um, now the people know that this is going to be a long night and the people are not willing to to take that as an answer because definitely it leaves us nowhere really in the whole scheme of things we cannot continue this way that is the truth if the president cannot address things as clear and practical as cost of living a bit, the build up to his campaign you know 90 percent of what he was talking about were about cost of living he was talking about Aguado, Gari, Ewa, all those kind of things where the issues he was discussing he was discussing basic staples food and um, you know things that actually will sustain life and living cost of living now we're talking about uh, a president that's supposed to understand the essence of the protest mm. to whom uh, a lot of address have been made directly to and demands then uh what he has to say is to come up with a speech that did not touch on any of the issue and this is not just the president's president's um, decision it's a whole lot okay it appears to me like a conspiracy people are around the president seems to have contributed immensely to the president's uh, inability to handle the issue mm. Because they are put forth to him um, an address that did not convey the message. Yes. And the president ought to actually vet his speech and ask that certain ideas, inputs, be made to reflect the demand and the agitation of the now. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, why Nigerians agonize? They agonize because they have not been able to see. Uh. in the speech their demands uh. that was put forth and after four days painful protests um exhaustion uh. okay um some persons have been killed already and some have been, some some have been injured it end up that the president is only talking about fluffy things things that you cannot even lay hold to as a problem. Yeah, that reminds me. As we take this home, one, the president said some protesters had been had died, and I thought, did they die or were they killed? That's one. Number two is maybe you should speak to that. Did these protesters die or they were killed? It's what a, is a is a wrong way of addressing the issue? Mm -hmm. These guys were killed by the police. Mm -hmm. Okay. The police had opened fire on many citizens, um, claiming that they are hoodlums mm -hmm. who have hijacked the protest. And repeatedly, the IG have been warned to, you know, to instruct the police not to shoot at citizens. Okay? And they went ahead and did this. Now, those who shot at citizens, they have not been identified. The policemen have not been identified. Mm -hmm. They have not been prosecuted or court martialed. Okay? and we are still moving on as if nothing happened the idea of police have not resigned mm. the cp in that state have not resigned, has not resigned yes. nobody has been punished the same thing that happened during the end the soldiers who went out there to shoot at protesters none of them have been prosecuted none have been dismissed none have been uh, none have resigned okay as a result of their action so it tell you that the masses are faced with a very difficult situation that the government they elected to power have no empathy do not care whether they live or die okay what sort of government will abandon the demands of her people and begin to chase ghosts and all that so that is a recipe for further violence and that is what informed the occupy abuja this morning okay otherwise the protest has weighed down already okay now for the president to step in if he's if he's strategic it's for him to step in and then lay down strategy of what he wants to do, what the government yeah. has to do. Now he came outside talking about that youth program, this youth program yeah. that were never advertised before now, yeah. who were the beneficiaries or who are the beneficiaries, yeah. who are those enrolled on to those yeah. programs yeah. and what is the input so far, what is the impact? So it, the government is not serious. It, good. I mean, we're taking this home. I, I wonder, he, he talked about automation that have come to help them um, save, for, save money, but we also know that but there's 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 waste in government we've seen how much government has spent on recurrent expenses in one year and a few months we've seen them buy 
millions uh, spend millions purchasing vehicles for lawmakers we've seen them spend uh, millions uh, buying a yacht for the for the president or whoever we've seen the president get acquire a new presidential jet we've seen uh, money being doled out for hard hard pilgrims who, who claim that they never got even even saw the money we've seen money being voted for the vice president none of that was addressed so uh, it, how are we saving the money is it not first of all to save to 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 cut waste right before you even talk about saving money we have which 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 should be stronger, carbon waste, substantial waste, or or the other one we was talking about? No, the truth is that the automation has, has helped them to see more money uh -huh. to squander. Oh yes, okay. It was the automation that they talking about that made them realize last year mm. that they need a, a supplementary budget, mm. wherein the content of that budget was pure profligacy. I was when they started purchasing cars for the two point two trillion. Yes, for that the, was spent in less than a month. Yeah, for the wife of the president and other sundry issues, wherein they fixing a uh, five thousand naira for federal civil servants. Now this year, they came up with the budget and came up with another. There's another uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. one again. Uh -huh. You understand? So the automation have helped them to see enough money now. These funds that are expected to put it together with what was realized from the removal of subsidy and use it to address specific issues uh. why can't you do that so um, i mean and uh, in all this all this money they have saved that now put to project none of this none of these projects uh, is people driven uh. because yeah because if you took up subsidy and say because you don't want to pay it could the people had it to enjoy it the best thing to do is to use that resources to embark on a people-driven project. And a people-driven project will be maybe like getting the refineries to work. Uh -huh. Then going down to those who are operating the modern refinery legally, license them, okay, get uh, a regulator that will regulate them so that we can start to produce internally and price will considerably be reduced. Well, but we threw all that to the wind and what we are doing now is we are delivering speech like a manifesto. <laughs> Two more issues. One, the president even said that this whole protest was a political agenda. No, it couldn't have been a political agenda. They've been pointing hands at Peter Obi and opposition mm. as part of those who <coughs> are sponsoring the protests or mm. protesters. Mm. But that is where they also get the intelligence wrong. Statements like that deepens the conversation that this government have no tact at all. For you to begin to think that it is political. When people are hungry, downcasted, and they, they have nowhere to go. They have nothing to fall back to. They can't go to school. They can't send their children to school. Then the next thing in your mind, the next resolution you are putting out there is that it's political. There's nothing <laughs> political about hunger. Nothing political about hunger. Hunger, uh, distress. There's nothing political about it. The politicians or your opposition don't have the capacity. Mm -hmm to go inside people who are not hungry mm. to get angry at government mm. something bigger than what they can do those your opposition is already happening to the people but even if we are sympathizers we've seen people i mean you can see this thing when you see you can you, you can tell when you see it can't you um we've seen anti-protest protesters who have largely faced all that now yes but who are crying out that the money they were promised yes they weren't given Yes, they will not be given to because they too have been deceived. <laughs> yeah, just like the larger. Citizens. So, whose agenda do we now say that is? Well, the government agenda, <laughs> because they make promises they don't keep, both legal promises and illegal promises. They don't keep any of them. What the now, those who went to fight protesters are crying. Mm. Protesters are crying. After the speech, there's nothing in for the protesters. Mm. There's nothing in for those who. Are protesting against the protester. Mm. There's nothing in for anybody. There's nothing in for democracy. So Last what you have is just meant for the elites. Well, speaking about nothing left for democracy, I, I, I wonder because the president himself yesterday let out a cry. It's like saying an SOS for democracy in Nigeria. Mm. Let me quote his speech from uh, my device. In a moment, I will get. He said, "This is, I think, the paragraph before the last paragraph, 36." He said. Let us work together, quoting the president, mm. let us work together to build a brighter future for ourselves and for generations to come. 
Let us choose hope over fear, unity over division, and progress over stagnation. The economy is recovering. Please don't shut out its oxygen. Now that we have been enjoying, and that's where I'm going, democratic governance for 25 years, do not let the enemies of democracy use you to promote an unconstitutional agenda that will set us back on our democratic journey. I mean, this is a flurry of saying, do not allow democracy to be truncated. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's no other way to put it. It's, it's fine language, but it's like saying, don't let any other government other than a democracy take over the governance of our country. It, it, is this the legitimate worry of a president, or is there really... Is it really that there are fears or something or what could happen? If there is any entity whatsoever that is fighting for the breakdown of democracy in the country, it's the government itself, indirectly. It's a legitimate fear because they know what they are doing is wrong. Yes, it's a legitimate fear of the government because we saw in Kano when people were carrying the Russian flag. Russian flags. <laughs> yes. Carrying Russian, carry Russian flag to protest would be like inviting uh, Putin into the discourse. <laughs> Okay, to come and save uh, some souls, just like they did in Niger. Ah. So if we begin to toe that line, you see, those people who took those flags, eh, they couldn't have thought that, thought that out. There are some persons, <laughs> some persons are the strong Are beating the drums. Yes, that got those flags and gave to them. The mm -hmm. people flying, they may not even know what they're really doing. Really yes. really, but it's a, a, a significant threat to the sovereignty of the state that in your own country during protests some group of persons are flying the flag of another country because when you fly the flag of another country what it means is that you are calling them for rescue you are calling that country to come rescue you you are you are your allegiance mm -hmm. you are it, flying a country's flag is you giving your allegiance to the country, to that country yes. that's what it means yes. so nigeria is a sovereign state and some persons within the state have carried the flag. Because the truth is that when protesters carried the Nigerian flag and they were flying it, government shot at them. Yes, they did. So now they have resorted to carry the flag of another country. Okay, fly the flag of another country while protesting. So it tells you that, so there's a woman that, uh, you know, came out with a pot. Mm. A woman came out with a child that is hungry. Mm. School children came out and they're hungry. Mm. Okay. So once citizens get to the point where their government can no longer help them, mm. they can resort to calling a, mm -hmm. neighbor, a neighbor. Okay? That's how it is in real life too. When you are drowning and you have a whistle, you blow the whistle for rescue team. When you, it, when it's you the wait, closest person that, that the Yes, it's the closest not, person that you pay allegiance to. Most able, yes. And at that point, any negotiation, any negotiation you want to negotiate survivor first is life first. Uh -huh. So that is that is what we, we have seen. And the government should not take that lightly. Mm -hmm. Government and that is why it reflected in the speech. <laughs> that is the only thing close to the protest that reflected in the speech. Exactly. No, no, no that exactly. Because that one just... threatened that one threatened the existence of the yeah. government. Yes. And now they, they are looking for a way to bring it under. They couldn't say it expressly. They brought they it under the last. Yeah, the last. and then brother, they don't allow this to, because the protesters, I mean, were only asking for certain demands. Uh -huh. But for you to see your citizen flying another country's flag, I mean, it's a serious, it's a serious warning that you must heed to. Well, we do hope that government indeed wakes up to uh, understand and underscore the seriousness of some of the issues that are burning in the country at the moment that has pushed um, some citizens to the streets to protest uh, and of course the untoward thing the president has himself said uh, Nigeria shouldn't allow themselves to be used but we hope that again uh, beyond this speech that government is well aware of what's going on and that they will take the right steps to do just what is necessary to be done to keep our country together but as I want to feel I must thank you for being on the program today you're welcome that's our package on homopolitics today. Thanks for watching. We do invite you to be a part of our community by subscribing to our page, dropping a comment in the comment section, and liking our videos. We are at Enterprise TV 7 on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and every other place. Until we come away again, bye for now.
Enterprise TV, a tradition of 